Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video in the Fixed Assets Acquisition Playlist. In the last video, I explained an overview of the different processes available for Fixed Assets Acquisition. In the video today, I will start with the first process, Fixed Asset Acquisition against a Supplier. I will explain the process and I will do a full demo on SAP S4HANA 2022. This process is very simple, it only has one step where we post a debit to the fixed asset account and a credit to the supplier accounts payable. But before we post the asset acquisition, we have to create the master data of the asset that we are going to acquire. To do this, we can go to accounting, financial accounting, fixed assets, asset, create, asset AS01. Here we have the asset class. This is a very important field that controls many things related to configuration. And then we have the company code that owns the asset and number of similar assets. In the example today, I'm creating a machine. I have here chosen the asset class 2000, which is for machinery and equipment. If you would like to see the different values available, you can always go to the available values here. And here also we have a reference. So if I want to copy an asset that is already existing, I can mention here the asset, asset sum number, company code, and so on. Now I will hit enter. Here I will insert the description. So let's say test machine demo zero one. Here we have the serial number. There are many fields in the fixed asset that are not mandatory. We can make them mandatory if we want, but generally there are many fields available for reporting because we would like always to generate reports for fixed assets to know where they are, what are the serial numbers, when did we buy them and so on but these fields are not required. So here I have the serial number. If I want to maintain it, I have something called the inventory number. Uh, I have the quantity and so on. So let's say the serial number is SDN45 anything. And then I will go to time dependent details. This is a very important tab. Here we have the cost center, which will be responsible for any expenses related to the fixed asset. For example, depreciation. So when we run the depreciation, it will go to this cost center. And as you see, it is called time dependent data because this data can change based on time. For example, today we are buying this machine, it will be in the production line one, so it will belong to the cost center of production line one, but then we can move it to another production line, let's say production line two, which has a different cost center. In this case, we will come here to the asset master data and we will create a new interval and maintain the new cost center. When we create the new interval, SAP will keep the history of the old interval. So any at any point of time, we can see that the asset used to be in cost center one, then it, mo it moved to cost center two and so on. The most important field we have in time dependent data is the cost center. We also have other fields. We can, for example, mention an internal order, plant location room. So this shows the location of the asset, where is the asset located in our company? And these are all statistical values that we need for reporting to know where the asset is, but they are not mandatory. The only one that's mandatory here is the cost center. The cost center I will use is 1000, enter. And then the last thing is the depreciation areas. So here I have only one depreciation area, and this is the depreciation key. And let's say the useful life is five. I'm just giving you an overview here. This is not part of the asset acquisition process. I'm just showing you how to create the asset. This is why I'm not going into all the details of what is a depreciation area and so on, but I will try to cover this in future videos. For now, I'm just creating a basic fixed asset master data so we can use it in our asset acquisition. So now this is it for this fixed asset. I will click on save. And our asset number is 206. So I will copy this number. And then now let's post our fixed asset acquisition. Before we do, let's display the asset master data. So if I go to asset, change or display, asset display. Here we can see all the details and we also have the field capitalized on first acquisition on the RMT. This asset has not been acquisitioned yet. And if we go to asset values, we will have no values here, it's all zeros. Now let's go and post our asset acquisition. And for this, I will open a new screen, slash O, generate. Now I will go to accounting, financial accounting, fixed assets, posting, acquisition, external acquisition with vendor. So here we have the different options that I explained in the different business processes available. We will go through all of them in the next videos. For the video today, we will use this one, F-90 asset acquisition with vendor. Here we insert the document date, 26, 10, 2022. 
The document type is KR, which is a supplier invoice, a financial supplier invoice without reference to material management. And here we have the company code, the currency, and here I will also mention the reference because it's mandatory. So test asset acquisition. And then here we have the posting key 31. 31 is for credit to a supplier. You can display the values here by clicking on this icon. And if we go down here, 31 is vendor credit. So this is vendor credit invoice and we have it here by default. So here we need to insert our vendor number. The vendor I'm using is AG02, enter. And then the value that we are buying for, let's say we are buying the asset for 5,000 USD. We can also mention the tax amount if there is tax included. I will leave this empty for now. And then I will mention, so this is the credit side. The debit side of the entry will be to the asset. And now debit asset is posting key 70. You can also find it in the list. And then we insert here our asset number. And the last thing we need to insert is the transaction type. So this is something related to fixed asset. Whenever we do any transaction, acquisition, retirement, we have to mention a transaction type. If you open the list here, SAP already has many predefined transaction types. Usually, we do not create new ones in any project. And this is also a configuration object. It controls many things related to the asset history sheet and things that tells SAP this is a debit posting or a credit posting and so on. We will not go into the details now. But for the standard external asset acquisition, we use the transaction type 100. Enter. Here we insert the value of the debit side, 5,000 and then post. To display the financial entry, we can go to document, display. Here is our financial entry. Here we have a credit to the supplier for 5,000 and we have a debit to the asset for 5,000. We can also go to the general ledger view to see the GL accounts. So this is the supplier accounts payable reconciliation account. And this one is the fixed asset acquisition account. Now let's switch to the fixed asset master data and see the update that happened there. Here we have in the posting information, capitalized on, here is the date that we used in the, our financial posting. And the first acquisition on is 26, 10, 2022. So this is the asset value date that was inserted when we posted the financial entry. And you can find this date here in the line item for the fixed asset. Here is the asset value date. This date came by default from the posting date that we used in the entry, but we can also change it in case we want the asset calculation to happen based on a different date. So for example, if I say that I want the asset depreciation to start the beginning next month, then I can insert asset value date as 01-11-2022. And this way, the fixed asset depreciation would start from 01-11. So this is the date that controls the values in fixed assets. I will give you more details about this in another video. If you are interested, just let me know in the comments. So here we have the dates. And then if we go to asset values, we can see that we have acquisition production cost transactions for 5,000 and acquisition value is 5,000. Ordinary depreciation that will be posted is 250. And then if I go to posted values here, so we don't have any depreciation posted yet. And uh, we have also the 5,000 that's already posted. And here we have the planned depreciation. So the planned depreciation for this asset for the rest of the year, we have one posting that will happen in November in 11 and another that will happen in December. And here are the values. If I go to planned values again, we can see here the transactions that happened for asset acquisition. So asset value date is 26, 10, 2022, 5,000 of transaction type 100 external asset acquisition. So this is it for the asset acquisition with a supplier without integration with material management. The last thing I will add, if you continue the video until here, is how we can do this on SAP Fury. So let me switch to SAP Fury here. I can search for the transaction with the transaction code F-90. And here we have the post acquisition integrated AP without purchase order transaction. So choose it. And then we follow exactly the same step as what we did in SAP GOE. There are no changes. I have already explained the overview of SAP Fury, how to start SAP Fury, how to use the navigation, and how to use the search uh, function and so on. So if you have any questions on how to use SAP Fury, you can check the video. I will leave you a link here on YouTube. And also if you have any questions, you can leave me a comment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video where I will explain how we can do asset acquisition against an automatic offsetting entry.